satellite interferometry processing is uh, sometimes complicated and the results uh, have uh, different quality. To verify the output, we can use uh, well-known persistent scattering pixels, especially based on known corner reflectors. Uh, here we can see how corner reflector looks. Uh, that's uh, expensive, professional corner reflector, uh, which is suitable for the buff Sentinel-1 orbits. And the same on uh, Google Earth map. Uh, in the addition to the corner reflector, we have uh, oil scatterers on the rooftops around. But the known coordinate is the best way to start the analysis and to end the analysis to estimate the output's quality. Again, we use uh, the similar pipeline to download, uh, to define and reframe Sentinel-1 since. And after aligning, we can uh, start to analyze corner reflectors positions and other persistent scatterers. First one for the analysis, as uh, for interferograms creation, we need to align the stack. When the stack is aligned, we use uh, Sentinel-1 synths without any post-processing to estimate uh, the intensity and uh, standard deviations. There are other mathematical functions which could be used here, but uh, these two are the simplest and provide uh, very good results. Uh, just for example, see the average SOC amplitude for the defined uh, image stack for the known corner reflector. We see the high amplitude bright pixel here and some ones around. Uh, for your information, these two pixels correspond to the location of uh, rooftop around. I mean this building, as it's shown on Google Earth map. Uh, GMTS definition of uh, persistent scatterers function is a bit different to PyGMTSA definition, but I prefer the last one, while we can use the GMTSA way to. Uh, there are two commented uh, sections where the required code provided. This function calculates the dispersion and amplitudes for every pixel in the Sentinel-1 aligned stack. And uh, also it calculates the norm multiplier to normalize uh, the average uh, Sentinel-1 scene amplitude. Using the normalize uh, uh, factor and the amplitude and dispersion, we can define so named uh, persistent scatterist function. Also, we can uh, plot all the functions separate. This plot shows uh, values for SOC intensity, nomed SOC intensity, for the known uh, corner reflector position, the red, and uh, for the nearest pixels too. Also, PS function values are shown to in the legend. Uh, as we see, the average PS function is much smaller than the PS function for corner reflector. By this way, we can easily identify the corner reflectors 
and our persistence scatterers. On this plot, we see the amplitudes for three known corner reflectors. First, second, third. The first one is uh, shown above. Look here the persistent scatterers function for all the three corner reflectors. We see very bright pixels here corresponding to the reflectors positions. And uh, for the stack for different dates, how looks uh, the first corner reflector on the SLC amplitudes. We see the bright pixel at the reflector position. Uh, this cell allows us to export geocoded uh, results for persistent scatteries function. After that, we are able to form SBAS uh, pairs again and create the interferograms. But there is the difference that we can use the persistent scatteries function for weighted interferograms filtering, enhancing the output results. For the same two pixels as before, where the first one is the pixel neighbor to the first corner reflector, and the second is the corner reflector position, we calculate interferogram without Gaussian filtering, and uh, using wavelength 15 meters equal to Sentinel-1 azimuth resolution uh, weighted using persistent scatteries function. Wavelength is uh, equal to 1 azimuth resolution, 2 azimuth resolution 30 meters, and the results compared here. The comparison table illustrate how the phase difference and correlation difference depends of the filter size. For the first column, uh, when we use not filtered results, the output is uh, equal to the lesson 2 table. This and this. For the weighted interferogram filtering, we have different results. The difference between two neighbor pixel phases is uh, 0.19. When for less than two, the same difference is 0.25. It means for the same filter size, we have more close, more stable phase between the pixels for the weighted filtering. And the same for correlation, while for our case, the correlation is uh, very high for the above cases. Using the same wavelength uh, as before, 60 meters, we calculate over interferograms uh, using the weighting persistent scatterist function. Define it in this argument. This is the output phase. We can compare it to the previous results in lesson 2. The phase uh, looks uh, very similar to the lesson 2 results, but the correlation is very different. Let's compare lesson 3 and lesson 2 result. We see a lot of well uh, correlated pixels. So, using the persistent scatterist function, we can enhance the results and define stable phase values for very challenging areas. More detailed uh, comparison is available on this plot. We can compare the results to less than two outputs. For this uh, correlation patch, we see Almost all pixels are well correlated. Return to the less than two results. We see much more low correlation pixels here. 
return to lesson 3. And for face, we see much more stable pixels too. Let's compare again the last face picture to the lesson 2. See this area where just one outlier face pixel generates uh, a lot of round face uh, pixels around it as the result of uh, Gaussian filtering. Using the persistent scattering weighted Gaussian filtering, we enhance uh, the results uh, in less than three, so just the one pixel has a very different value, but not a set of pixels around it as uh, in less than two results. And the same for other areas uh, can be found too. In this way, weighted Gaussian filtering removes speckle noise as effective as before and enhances uh, the phase stability and uh, correlation between the scenes. Multi-looking results available too and we can compare them again to the previous ones. This is less than three results and the same results for the lesson two. There is no significant difference for this level of zoom, while the separate pixels are much more stable. For the correlation, even for this level of zoom, we see very significant enhancing. Let's compare to the lesson two results. Lesson two results almost all the correlation values are zero and less than three results. We have a lot of high correlation pixels everywhere, so that's possible to unwrap the face for the full area. 